I never believed we would hear our own voice echoed back from the void, until three I Atlas proved me wrong. For decades, I've studied the cosmos with the understanding that we are shouting into an empty cathedral. We send radio waves, television broadcasts, digital signals, all of it streaming outward at the speed of light, hoping someone somewhere might be listening. We've operated under the assumption that this conversation is one-sided, that we are alone in our cosmic soliloquy. 3. I Atlas has shattered that assumption. Before we begin, I need you to do something for me. Comment your city name below and tell me, have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky recently? Any lights that move differently? Any stars that seem to pulse with rhythm? NASA is quietly monitoring reports from civilians across the globe, and your observation may be more important than you realize. My name is Michio Kaku, and what I'm about to share may change the way you see humanity's place in the universe. When the object was first detected in August of 2019, it appeared to be nothing more than another interstellar visitor, a rogue comet from beyond our solar system, passing through like a tourist with no intention of staying. The astronomical community cataloged it, tracked its trajectory, and prepared to watch it fade back into the infinite darkness from which it came. It was moving fast, far too fast to be gravitationally bound to our sun. Its path was hyperbolic, meaning it would swing past us once and never return. We thought we understood what we were looking at, but in the weeks following its closest approach to Earth, something happened that has kept me awake for longer than I care to admit. Something that has divided the scientific community into factions of silence, skepticism, and sheer existential terror. 3i Atlas began transmitting. Not random noise. Not the electromagnetic whispers of a comet's coma interacting with solar wind. It was broadcasting structured signals, patterns with mathematical precision, waveforms with intentional modulation. And within days of detection, a small team of radio astronomers at the Very Large Array in New Mexico made a discovery that would never be publicly disclosed in full detail. The signals were ours, not similar to ours, not inspired by ours. They were exact replicas of radio and television broadcasts that Earth had transmitted decades ago. News reports from the 1970s, television shows from the 1980s, digital satellite feeds from the early 2000s. All of it reflected back at us with perfect clarity, as though 3i Atlas had been holding up a mirror to our electromagnetic fingerprint. At first, the prevailing theory was interference. Perhaps the object's composition, some exotic metallic surface or crystalline structure, was naturally reflecting our signals like an orbital mirror. But the data didn't support that. The reflection wasn't passive. It was active, amplified, and it was selective. Certain broadcasts were repeated multiple times. Others were altered, restructured with additional layers of information encoded into the carrier waves. It was as if something was curating our history and sending it back to us with annotations. I remember sitting in a conference room with 11 other physicists, each of us staring at the decoded transmission logs. One broadcast in particular stopped us cold. It was a segment from a 1977 episode of Carl Sagan's Cosmos, the one where he talks about the loneliness of intelligent life in the universe. In the original, Sagan's voice speaks of our isolation with poetic melancholy. In the reflected version, there was an additional voice layered beneath his not human, not mechanical, but something in between. It spoke in harmonics, in frequencies that seemed to bypass the ear and vibrate directly in the chest. We couldn't translate it, but we could feel it, and what we felt was unmistakable. It was a warning. Let me take you deeper into what 3i Atlas actually is because the public understanding is incomplete by design. When we classify an object as interstellar, we mean it originated outside our solar system. Only two confirmed interstellar objects had been detected before 3i Atlas. One I Umwamua in 2017 and two I Borisov in 2019. Both were anomalies in their own right. But 3i Atlas is different in ways that defy natural explanation. Its velocity profile doesn't match any known cometary behavior. It accelerated as it approached our solar system, then decelerated near Earth, then accelerated again as it departed, all without visible outgassing or propulsion signatures. Its surface reflectivity changed during transit, shifting between absorptive blackness and mirror-like brilliance in cycles that corresponded with its transmission bursts. And perhaps most disturbing, its trajectory adjusted. Not by much, but enough to be statistically impossible for a passive object.
it altered its course to pass closer to Earth. NASA will not confirm this publicly, but the trajectory data is available to anyone with access to the Minor Planet Center's database. If you overlay the initial predicted path with the observed path, there is a deviation of approximately 2 million kilometers, a margin that cannot be explained by gravitational perturbation or solar wind alone. Someone, or something, piloted that object into our neighborhood. The implications are staggering. If 3i Atlas is a probe, then it was launched long before humanity ever existed. Our oldest radio signals, the ones now reaching 70 to 80 light years into space, have only just begun their journey into the galaxy. For an extraterrestrial intelligence to receive those signals, decode them, and send a response, they would need to be impossibly close, or they would need technology that operates outside the known laws of physics. Or, and this is the theory that haunts me, they've been listening far longer than we've been transmitting. What if the signals we detected weren't reflections at all? What if they were playbacks from an archive? A record kept by a civilization that has been monitoring Earth for millennia, waiting for us to reach a certain threshold of technological development before making contact. Consider the mathematics of cosmic civilizations. The Drake Equation estimates the number of detectable civilizations in our galaxy based on star formation rates, planetary habitability, and the emergence of intelligent life. Even with conservative estimates, there should be thousands of advanced civilizations within our galaxy alone. Yet we detect nothing. This is the Fermi Paradox, the Great Silence. But what if the silence is intentional? What if advanced civilizations practice a form of cosmic quarantine, observing younger species from a distance until they prove themselves worthy of contact, or until they pose a threat? 3i Atlas may be the first evidence that we've crossed a threshold. The reflected broadcasts weren't random. Analysis revealed a pattern in their selection. Every transmission that was echoed back dealt with themes of war, environmental destruction, nuclear capability, or artificial intelligence. News footage of Hiroshima. Documentaries on climate change. Debates about autonomous weapon systems. Even fictional content. Films and television episodes that depicted humanity's self-destructive tendencies. It was as if we were being shown a mirror of our darkest impulses. And then buried within the final transmission burst before 3i Atlas exited the solar system, we found something that shouldn't exist. A mathematical proof. Not in binary, not in any human language, but in pure symbolic logic. A proof that addresses the incompleteness theorems of Kurt Gödel, extending them in ways that suggest the existence of computational systems far beyond anything we've conceived. Whoever sent this understands mathematics at a level that surpasses our greatest minds. And they embedded this proof within our own broadcasts, as if to say, we know what you're capable of and we know what you're becoming. I've spent my career studying string theory, quantum mechanics, the fundamental forces that govern reality. I've always believed that the universe operates on principles of logic and order. But 3i Atlas has introduced a variable I never accounted for. The variable of intent, not physical causality, but conscious, deliberate action from an intelligence so advanced that it treats our solar system as a waypoint, our civilization as a curiosity, or worse, as a problem. There's a concept in astrobiology called the Great Filter. It's the idea that somewhere between the emergence of life and the development of galaxy-spanning civilizations, there exists a barrier, a filter that most species fail to pass. It could be nuclear war. It could be ecological collapse. It could be the rise of artificial superintelligence that views its creators as obsolete. What if 3i Atlas is a test? What if advanced civilizations use these probes to assess whether younger species will survive their own technological adolescence? And what if the reflection of our broadcasts was meant to show us exactly why we're failing? The emotional weight of this realization is almost unbearable. I've dedicated my life to the pursuit of knowledge, to the dream of humanity reaching for the stars and joining a galactic community of enlightened beings. But 3i Atlas suggests that the universe may already have rendered its judgment. We are being watched, evaluated, and perhaps quietly mourned. Because the final transmission, the one that came through in the last hours before the object left our detection range, 
contained a sequence that our cryptographers have tentatively translated. It wasn't a greeting. It wasn't an invitation. It was six words repeated in every known mathematical and linguistic framework we could apply. You are running out of time. I don't know who sent that message. I don't know if they mean it as a threat, a warning, or a statement of cosmic inevitability. But I know this, 3i Atlas was not the first probe to pass through our solar system. Oumuamua exhibited similar anomalies, and there are 17 additional objects currently being tracked by deep sky surveys that show trajectory inconsistencies and unexplained acceleration profiles. We are not being visited once. We are being visited continuously. And the question I keep returning to, the one that gnaws at me in the quiet hours of the night, is this. Are they here to help us or to ensure we don't become a threat? Humanity stands at a crossroads. We have nuclear arsenals capable of sterilizing our planet. We have artificial intelligence systems advancing faster than our ability to control them. We have environmental tipping points approaching with terrifying speed. And now we have evidence that we're being observed by intelligences that may see us as a species in its final days. What do we do with that knowledge? Do we accelerate our efforts to reach the stars, hoping that by demonstrating our capability for exploration and cooperation, we prove ourselves worthy? Or do we turn inward, addressing the existential threats we've created for ourselves before we're judged too dangerous to exist? I've spoken with colleagues who believe we should broadcast a response to 3i Atlas, a message of peace, of our desire to learn and grow. Others argue that any response is reckless, that we should remain silent and hope we're beneath their notice. And a small, quiet faction believes it's already too late, that whatever judgment was rendered, it was rendered long ago. And what we're witnessing now is simply the documentation phase, the recording of a species before its extinction. I don't have answers. I have data theories, and an overwhelming sense that the universe is far stranger and more dangerous than I ever imagined. But I also have hope, because if there's one thing that defines humanity, it's our refusal to accept inevitable endings. We are a species that looks at extinction and says, not yet. Maybe that defiance is what they're looking for. Maybe that's the variable that determines whether we pass the filter or join the countless silent civilizations that came before us. Follow this channel as we continue decoding the universe's final warnings. Because what comes next, what we discover in the signals still being analyzed and the objects still approaching, will define not just our generation, but every generation that may or may not follow. I'll leave you with this question, and I genuinely want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If an advanced intelligence is watching us, judging us, deciding our fate, what would you want them to see? What single achievement, what moment in human history would prove that we deserve to survive? Think carefully, because somewhere out there in the cold vastness between stars, something is listening, and it's waiting for our answer.